So they say it's super easy to set up a new Spring Boot application thanks to what are called starter dependencies. When you create the app, you go to start.spring.io, Spring Initializer, you're supposed to have all the starters that you can choose from. So you don't have to worry about exactly what jars you need. You just want some framework functionality, just pull the starter that's associated with it and you're done. Then you go to Spring Initializer to create your Spring Boot application and there are 200 gazillion starters to choose from. Yeah, that's a totally accurate number, by the way. And now, if you don't know what to do, then your life is a lie. Well, fear not. In this video, I will show you seven of the top Spring Boot starters that you absolutely need to know, irrespective of whether you're a beginner or a pro. Let's go. Now, before we dive into the deep end with the specific starters, let's talk about the core necessity of every Spring Boot application, the Spring Boot starter itself. This forms the foundation that all other starters are built upon. This is the default starter that includes a bunch of stuff that you'll probably need for any Spring Boot application. Things like auto configuration support, logging, the application context, right? Essentially, it is what gets your app up and running and provides the core components necessary for any Spring Boot project. So why is it important to understand the Spring Boot starter before looking at others? Well, think of this as kind of like the mother of all starters, right? The core to which all other starters are attached. All the specific starter dependencies that we're gonna be looking at in this video, they actually rely on Spring Boot starter, right? Those other starters bring in additional configurations and libraries which are relevant to what they're trying to do, but they make sure they pull in the base starter. You might be adding different starters for various functionalities, but under the hood, they all pull in this foundational starter, which is called Spring Boot Starter. Now that you know about the important Spring Boot Starter core, now let's get into the specific ones. Spring Boot Starter Web, first on our list, is an absolute must for anyone building a web application in Spring Boot. This starter packs everything you need for developing MVC applications or RESTful services. It brings in some critical dependencies like Spring MVC, which provides the model view controller architecture. You can write Java controller classes to handle web requests. Spring Boot apps are built into what are called fat jars, which means the jar has everything you need to spin up a web container. You don't need a separate web container in order to run and deploy this in. Well, guess how you get the web container in your Spring Boot web apps? Well, let us Spring Boot Starter Web. So this starter brings in Tomcat as the default embedded container, and it does a bunch more things as well. It adds Jackson for JSON parsing, it adds validation libraries, and a bunch of other things that really equip your application for the web context. And the best part, this starter takes care of a lot of the boilerplate configuration and code. And you're gonna see this in a lot of the starters that we're gonna be looking at today, right? Spring Boot is famous for the concept of convention over configuration, which means that you don't have to do a lot of configuration as long as the defaults of these Spring Boot starters match what you need, match your expectations, you're good to go, right? It's only if you need something which is different from what's provided by default that you need to configure anything at all. And that's true for this starter dependency as well comes with a bunch of intelligent defaults that are necessary for any typical Spring Web application. That's the reason why this is number one on our list. Moving on to number two and security. If your application requires authentication and authorization, you just cannot overlook Spring Boot Starter Security. This starter is kind of like a one-stop shop for adding security to your Spring Boot applications. It provides a pretty good set of security features that are, again, sensibly configured out of the box, really good defaults. With this starter, you gain access to Spring Security's authentication and authorization capabilities. Out of the box, you get basic features like form login pages, which to be honest, you wouldn't use for production applications, but it's extensible. You can build on top of it. And especially if you're building APIs, you get token authentication. You also get protection against common security exploits that you normally have to think about and handle yourself and protect against yourself, like cross-site request forgery, you have session fixation, you have click jacking, it protects against all of that. So you can deal with just writing your code and not have to be a security expert. Plus, Spring Security is highly customizable, so you can tailor your security configurations to fit the precise needs of your application. Because one thing I've noticed from experience, different organizations have very 
three different security needs. So it's good that the starter is configurable so you can kind of tweak it to what you want to achieve for your security. So this is starter number two, security. Moving on to starter number three, let's talk about data. Because in the world of enterprise Java, a relational database is really still the king. And when it comes to writing code to manage your data in a relational database, Spring Boot Starter Data JPA is the quickest way to get a Spring Boot application set up to connect to a relational database. You see, JPA or Java Persistence API is a set of specifications for mapping data between Java objects, your POJOs, and a relational database, right? It's the bridge between the object-oriented world of Java and the table-structured world of databases. Now, why is this important? Well, without JPA, you'd be struggling with setting up boilerplate SQL, JDBC setups, and let's not even talk about the headache of what's called object relational impedance mismatch. It's the pain of converting your objects to SQL tables and vice versa, right? JPA kind of smooths out all those wrinkles. It offers a higher abstraction for database interactions. That's a big win for productivity and maintainability. Of course, this is controversial. A lot of people don't like JPA. They feel like it adds extra complexity. Whatever the case might be, if you've decided to go for JPA and you feel like that's the way you would want to interact with relational databases, this is the starter to go for. It hooks your Spring Boot applications with the relational database using JPA, right? That's exactly what Spring Boot Starter Data JPA brings to the party. Imagine having the power of JPA with Spring Boot's auto configuration. It uh, helps you fast track your Spring Boot applications with the popular Hibernate as a default JPA provider, but it also does a bunch more stuff. It kind of auto configures your connection pool, which is crucial for handling database connections efficiently. It intelligently scans for entity classes and repositories, kind of setting the stage for how your code interacts with the database, right? And as with other starters, with Spring Boot Starter Data JPA, you get intelligent defaults. It makes educated guesses about your database settings. It even uses an embedded database as default. If you haven't configured anything at all, your code still works because it's using an embedded database by default. Uh, other things, you get transaction management that's already set up right from the start, right? Transaction is very important for data integrity and consistency, especially when we're talking about relational databases. So you get that. And Spring Boot ensures that this all works out of the box, provided by the at transaction annotation that helps you easily manage your database transactions. Quite a lot of features that are essential for a Spring Boot app that connects to a relational database. That makes it a vital third starter dependency in our list. Moving on to number four, next on our list is testing with the Spring Boot Starter Test. This starter is a key for any developer who wants to write tests, which should be everyone, right? Fun fact, this starter is automatically included in every Spring Boot project that you create in Spring Initializer. So clearly the Spring team feels that testing is essential and as a result, the starter is essential. Well, yeah, testing is crucial. And thus the starter brings in all the dependencies that you need for testing a Spring Boot application. We're talking about libraries like JUnit for your unit test. And then you have Spring Test, Spring Boot Test, which are specifically for integration testing with Spring Boot features. You also get some handy libraries like AssertJ for fluent assertions and uh, Mockito for mocking. Now, what's great about the Spring Boot Starter Test is that it's tailored for Spring Boot environments, right? That means that it configures defaults for testing in a Spring Boot context. So for instance, it uses at Spring Boot test annotation that sets up your test context exactly like your actual runtime Spring Boot environment. So you can stick that annotation in and just start writing tests without worrying about how to wire things in, right? This can be a huge time saver and gives you confidence that if your tests are actually working in your test environment, it will work in production as well because it's the same wiring that happens behind the scenes. So with this starter, you can write unit tests, integration tests, even functional tests. You can do a lot and yet this is designed to get out of the way and let you focus on just writing tests and you don't have to do a lot of setup and configuration. Moving on to number five, you're not going to think about this too much when you're writing code, but when you deploy your app, there are a few things that are guaranteed to stay on your mind. Things like monitoring your running application. How is my running app doing? Checking health, 
utilization metrics. So when it comes to maintaining and monitoring your running Spring Boot application, the go-to starter dependency is Spring Boot Starter Actuator. This starter adds production-ready monitoring features to your application, like health checks, like metrics, like application information. This starter exposes a number of REST endpoints that give you insights into the runtime operation and the internal state of your running application. These endpoints are a part of a larger suite of Spring Boot Actuator Web's API that includes a bunch of other stuff like metrics, health information, environment properties, configuration settings, and so much more. So for example, there is a slash health endpoint, and it can be used to check the status of your application and its components, like what are the database connections or the message brokers and disk space. There's also slash metrics endpoint, which provides a wealth of information about the JVM as how much memory is being used, what's the garbage collection statistics, what are the thread statistics, how many web requests have happened, and there's so much more. And what's more, these actuator APIs are extensible. You can actually add your own endpoints to expose whatever information you want to measure and track all of that with the familiar Spring programming model, right? So what's super cool about the Spring Boot Starter Actuator is that you get these insights without having to write additional monitoring code, which makes it a go-to starter that I almost always tend to just drop in. Whenever I'm creating a Spring Boot app, I make sure that the actuator dependency is there. Moving on, for applications or microservices that rely on event-driven architectures or need asynchronous messaging, Spring Boot Starter AMQP is an essential starter. AMQP stands for Advanced Message Queuing Protocol, and it's widely used in microservice architectures. This is what allows services to communicate with each other in a decoupled manner. But think about it, what's likely to be used with event-driven apps and microservices? No points for guessing, it's events. These apps require good integration with event brokers or message brokers, right? It's sending events all across. And that's exactly what the starter helps you with. It provides that integration, right? It provides the necessary auto configuration to integrate Spring Boot applications with these message brokers like RabbitMQ. It makes it super easy to both produce and consume messages. With its help, you can set up message queues and exchanges and bindings, and you do all this with simple annotations and property configurations. Why is messaging important in microservices? Well, it allows you to build scalable and loosely coupled systems, which is more important, that can handle a high volume of messages. Well, if you want to do that stuff, well, this is the starter to use, right? Using the starter, you can send messages from one microservice to another without having to worry about the underlying details of that messaging system or what consumes that message, right? Spring Boot configures Rabbit template and simple Rabbit listener container factory to simplify sending and receiving of these messages. This means that you can focus on writing the business logic of your microservices and let Spring Boot handle the complexities of AMQP setup and configuration. Well, everybody seems to be doing event-driven microservices these days. So this starter is a powerful tool for modern microservice-based applications for event-driven architectures, securing this place in our list. All right, last but not the least on our list is Spring Boot Starter Batch, which is a must-have for developers working with batch processing. Spring Batch offers a robust framework for writing, scheduling, and monitoring jobs that can process large volumes of data. So what is batch? Well, when you write code, you can classify the work being done into two broad categories, roughly speaking. One is request response. Somebody made a request and your code figures out the response and sends it as a reply, right? The second category is batch processing where nobody is actively asking you for it and waiting it right now, right? But this is work that needs to be done perhaps overnight to crunch some numbers or do file transfers or something that will need to be done at some point, right? There isn't an active consumer waiting for a response in now, but it is jobs that need to be done at some point. Batch processing, is essential in scenarios where we need to perform operations on like large data sets at regular intervals. For example, nightly data imports or generating reports, right? That's where the starter helps. Spring, Spring Boot Starter Batch leverages Spring Boot's auto configuration to get your batch jobs up and running with very minimal fuss, right? It integrates seamlessly with Spring Boot and it provides default 
configuration for your batch jobs. Plus, with this comprehensive ecosystem of Spring, you can easily add more complex functionality like chunk processing, retry logic, and job listeners. So as with other starters, this starter lets you focus on the logic of your task rather than the details of how to set it up, how to run it, and how to configure it. You know, figuring out what is necessary for the framework. You don't have to do all that. Spring Boot is going to take care of it, and the starter is going to take care of it. So there you have it the top seven Spring Boot starters that can help you in the wide range of scenarios when building and maintaining your applications. Remember, Spring Boot's philosophy is all about plug and play, right? Simplifies dependency management and auto configuration, and you plug in what are the things that you need for your applications. And with these starters, you're beginning at a great starting point to tackle those corresponding challenges, and you can tweak them as you go. It just comes with great defaults that gets you started right away. So these are the top starters that you should be aware of and using. Do you have something that I've missed from this list? Let me know in the comments. And also, check out this video.